Hello, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Mo Elias. Um, I own a frame shop in New York called Big Apple Art Gallery and Framing. Today we have a, a demo for you guys from Hoffman Machine. Uh, this is sponsored by Hoffman, and we have Gary Kaufman with a K. And uh, if you've been to the West Coast Autumn Frame Show or any of the other shows, Gary and uh, 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 and his machine is always there, and he's demoing for everybody. So uh, they're always very crowded, and th this will be a good place to see a demo. Gary, how's it going, man? Hey, it's going pretty well. How are you guys? Good. Gary, if you can come closer to the phone because I can't hear you. Me and Gary uh, rehearsed this a couple of times. We had very good sound <laughs> quality. Last minute, the sound went bad. So uh, yeah, we we're, apologize. We're, we're broadcasting from here in North Carolina, and we've been going through some of these fun storms right now. So it is, it is out right now. <laughs> so, something went wrong. So uh, we'll figure yeah. something out. Gary, tell me all about the Hoffman. What it's all about? What does the Hoffman do? And why does my shop need to get one? Well, we usually run into three main questions uh, and, and answers when we're going through this. Uh, it shows the biggest one by far is if you've ever had an issue when you're trying to stack those VNAMs into a frame um, and you start seeing bulging or splitting or blowout on the sides of these frames like this, Yeah. Um, what the Hoffman key does, it comes in, routes a keyway, and you insert the key, it takes away that splitting, it takes away the bulging, especially in the real shiny frames. Um, that in itself is a great reason to get a Hoffman. Like I say, just with that fastener right there, it, it takes care of all that issue. The second one is, uh, if you run in and start getting in a real small frames, uh, we see some of these frames going inside of shadow boxes, it's like an auxiliary frame, I guess you call it. Um, that's another reason. You can't be nail that this size. I, 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 I'd be hard pressed to put a quarter in there. Uh, the next thing is, if you ever have the need to go out and do any kind of uh, on-site stretcher, strainer, bar type things, you can machine the Hoffman key into the corners and then insert it when you get in the field. Those are three big things that framers seem to really like. You know, Gary, I also like to use it on uh, floater frames. Uh, yeah. You know how we have the tall floater frames? Yep. And when you get into floater frames, and we grab another second example, when you get in and do floater frames like this, again, we start seeing people with a bulge or a crack or split here. and. It's going to be on the fourth floor, the whole nine yards. That's where we come in with the Hoffman key. We make these in five different sizes. So it allows us to get into the floater frame walls all the way down to about a quarter of an inch using our W0 key. We'll put one key here. We'll put one key on the inside. And that takes away any pivot the joint may try to have. Now, Gary, uh, for those who don't have a Hoffman, when you say key, what does that mean? What is a key? The Hoffman key is a plastic key. It's a tapered mechanical fastener. Uh, so when you drive that in, it almost goes in like a wedge. It aligns the joint and holds it tight, unless that glue set up uh, without having to put it on a clamp or a vise or anything like that. Within minutes, that frame's ready to be worked. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Hoffman is a German company as, mu as much as I understand, correct? It, it is. It's a family-owned company. Uh, we've been in the States about 25 years. Uh, it shows you see Marcus with me. Marcus is my boss, the big German guy. Uh, he's been here a little over 25 years. I've been here just under 25 years selling product and machinery. So if you ever run into any issues or questions, usually 99% of the time you're going to talk to Marcus Drive for help. Now, for, for, for those of you who've never met Marcus before, he's a tall German guy, and you know, the, 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 the conception of German people not being uh, personal and funny. This guy, he totally defies it. You look at him and you don't think so, but you go out with this guy and have a beer. Uh, this guy's a blast. He, he is a blast. All right. So um, let's let's see a demo of your machine. And then I have sure. some questions I've written up here. I want to know what these things cost and all the key size and all that stuff. Um, I'll let you take it and let me know when you're ready. Uh, and then I'll ask some of my questions. Yeah, perfect. Now, keep in mind, Gary, that um, your headphone headset isn't working anymore. So you need to speak up when you're far from the phone. Yeah, and I'm going to come closer and show you a couple of things. I've just got some standard miter material here okay. and our standard W258 key. A couple of rules of thumb. You want to go as deep into the, the joint or as deep into the frame as you possibly can. That's going to give you the most hold on the face of the joint. And then the, the uh, decision as to where to locate the key, we always tell people if you're going to put one key in it, come to the inside 
uh, work your way to the inside just slightly off center. And I'll show you real quick. I'm going to set this up, make a quick joint, show you how it works. We've got a depth setting guide here on the machine. And this simply goes up and down. It's tape scale. I set it, lock it in place. That sets the depth of your joint. This gives you your key. So now, when you insert the key, you insert the rounded end of the key first. That starts that tapering process and draws that joint together and holds it tight. I exaggerated coming to the inside of this one just to show you how it works. But still, if you look at that base of that joint, there's absolutely no crack. Yeah. Obviously, this is standard stuff, but we can do that on, on any frame from a tiny frame to a shell back mold. Now, uh, Gary, uh, do you recommend using glue when you join these with the Hoffman bits? With the Hoffman yes, key? Sir. We always say, uh, within reason, glue is our friend. We don't want people over gluing. Uh, and that's a, a big mistake we do see people make, putting too much glue. And when you go to put that key in, uh, it actually will squeeze some of the glue out. And on your frames in the framing industry, it's a lot different than the woodworking industry. You can't go in and sand and clean it up nice. So we say just a little bit of glue, let the key hold the joint together, clamp that glue, and that's going to take care of a lot of your issues of over glue. I see. Okay, so um, the keys that you have, what sizes do they come in? Okay, we make five different sizes of keys from W0 through W4. And we make them from a quarter inch long to four inches long. So you can get all the way in. I'm grabbing some keys here as I'm talking. If you can see that in my hand, yeah. you've got a little tiny key all the way to this size key. So we uh, lift it up a little bit. Room. I can't see. Lift it up, okay? <laughs> yeah. And they're W0 to W4. <clears throat> and then we have about 40 different lengths. That is the overall length of being how deep it's going to go in your frame. How deep is that, Gary? Uh, the one I have in my hands, two and three eighths. <clears throat> and that would work well into a frame, like a floater frame or a cap rail or shadow box, up to three inches deep. You can use this key with no problem. Can people stack these together? Can I stack a couple of these together? Yes, I actually do have some folks that will stack them. They may, they may not have the exact length they want. Yeah. So you can take a key countersink it or, or drive it in or even put the key on top of the mother. As long as you keep the wedge shape or the rounded end in and tap it in, it'll go in fine. I see. Okay. And um, so uh, um, you're talking about a W, you said W2, W1, and um, I also use a W0, right? That's the W0, the small one. Can you yeah, explain to people w who don't have often what the difference is between them? Yeah, the W0... Well, they're very small. They'll go in and do that quarter inch thick or quarter inch thick wall of your floater frames or cap rails. <coughs> um, I've got some folks that'll actually use it even in wider. Say they come in and do a like a hardwood frame like this instead of one W two key in here, mm -hmm. they'll put two W zero keys in there. Uh, the reason is they'll they'll do that just so they don't have to change the bit and speed things up and they. They can be running a thin wall or a thick wall floater or cap. So how hard is the change of the bit? Uh, the first time you do it, you're looking at probably 10 to 15 minutes to change mm -hmm. the bit. Um, once you get doing it, you can knock those out in under 10 minutes, especially with the new machines, the MU3 series that we brought out. We had picture framers a lot in mind for this machine. Uh, a couple things that are very uh, well received in your industry are the fine tuned adjustment. So if you need to move that key backwards or forwards in that joint a little bit, make it a little bit tighter, you've got a dial indicator on the back of the machine. Uh, and we show that in great detail on our website under our instructional tabs, yep. how to do that. The second thing is, is we put a center line locator on all the MU3 series machines from the MU3 manual to the MU3 PD, the pneumatic uh, digital one I have here. So what is what is the uh, uh, what is the center line finder, 
And what what yeah, does the digital do? My the machine I have doesn't have the digital. I'm sorry. The machine I have doesn't have the digital. I have the MU2 pneumatic. Yes, we we actually make a centerline locator that you put on there and take it off two or three minutes to put it on there. Uh huh. Uh, what that does that tells the exact center point of that bit or the the exact center point of the shank of that bit. So once you put that on there for one key, be it a W0 or W3 key. It's still showing you the exact center where that's going to route into that frame. I see. Okay. Now, um, you, oh, you're going to demo a um, a float frame for us. Do you have time for that? Yeah, we can we can pop one together. I can yeah. show you. Uh, I've got different ones here. What we do with the float frame, and I brought a large one just so I can you can see it better than the, than the small tiny one on the video. What we do is just put one in the wall, and I'm just looking here for the center. And then again, I take a different deck because I'm going to set it up here on the edge, and this will come up and round out deeper. And again, we would do this with a thin, very thin, delicate one, or a big, heavy. Uh -oh. <laughs> So that gives you your route into your collar piece. And then what we do here, you do not have to change the depth when you're doing a floater frame. Because you're going to see this blow through. And we do that on purpose. Hey, Gary, I got a question for you. So then if you can see the back of it, we come in here. Gary, can you come closer to the camera? I can't hear you. Gary, come closer to the camera. I can't hear you. I'm sorry? Come closer to the camera. I can't hear you. Okay. What I was showing you is we, we have two keys in here now. Uh -huh. So we'll put one key in the, the tall part. And then the reason we blew through this side was you can now set this frame down, put this key in from the inside of the joint, and it will be easier for that corner. And then you can see how everything is in the back. I see. Um, uh, Gary, uh, there is, uh, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Uh, folks, we, we tested this before. Uh, we had very good sound. And a minute before we went live, something happened and his headset disconnected, so we can't hear very well. Uh, Tammy's saying audio is making this awfully hard to understand. Uh, I, I know we, this is the nature of things. Sometimes some things do go bad. Yeah, uh, we've got a bad thunderstorm going on right now. We've had about five inches of rain in the past six days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, so uh, uh, so I have a few questions. I bought some keys that were on sale on your website, and they were different colors. So why do you have different colors, and how many different colors do you have on the keys? Okay, we, we stock eight different colors of keys, and the reason we have different colors, I'm going to grab a frame example here. We have some folks that will actually come through and route and do the key on the face of the joint. Ooh. They'll route all the way through the entire thing and do the key on the front as a decorative feature. Uh, and then even on the back, we have some people, if you ever see the back, or we have a lot of collegiate uh, people doing like uh, shadow boxes and things for uh, colleges. Yeah. And they'll come in and match a key with their school color and use it as a decorative feature. All right. So the colors are decorative. They're not any functional, right? It doesn't matter what no, color. They don't you... change any function. Uh, they're the same key, and, and like I say, with minimum order quantities and things like that, if you want a purple key, we can get it. If you want a green key, we can get it. Uh, we're not limited to colors. Now, so how much does a machine like this cost? So uh, this machine is more advanced than mine. It's got the digital stuff to it. Uh, yeah. what, what else is it better about the machine that I have? Uh, the machines, the older machines are great machines. This one just has a few features that you can't get with the older machine. Right. Uh, one you just mentioned the digital option and uh, what that is is it allows you to go to the same key location each time and mm -hmm. go to the same depth each time uh, we do that with a magnetic strip um, we've got a few features on there that we can do table extensions now um, but again we'll go back to the two main ones that we put on here that 
that are embraced by the picture frame industry are that center line locator and they are the fine adjustment. Now, um, I want to ask, okay, there's a question here. What is it? Uh, are the decorative keys made out of wood? We do have keys made out of wood. Those are purely decorative. There's no structural uh, point to those keys. What we do in a key, a wooden key, it's an end grain key. <coughs> so say you route in something one inch deep, we would have you put in a five eighths inch key. That's going to give you your alignment and your strength. The wooden key is purely decorative. We have people that come in and put a maple key in a oak door, or they may put a, a, a wenge key in a maple uh -huh. frame. Sure, sure. And it just gives it a nice look from the back. It gives it that true craftsmanship look. But it's just purely decorative. It has no purely function. Purely decorative. You cannot use a wooden key for strength. You need to use it in conjunction with a plastic. All right, so uh, uh, how much is the machine that you're demoing today, right behind you, this MU3? This how much is that? It's our top of the line bench top machine with all the belts and whistles. You're looking at $4,600. $4,600. Uh, the MU3 line starts at $2,900. Okay. And so this is top of the line being nomadic with the digital and all that good yes, stuff. Sir. Okay. And um, uh, so I put a note up there to call you for a special discount. So is there a discount on top of that? Yes, what we're doing right now is uh, I, I just spoke to Marcus actually again earlier today about it. What we're going to do is 5% off the machine, and we're going to do 5% off any accessories. And then also we're going to we do a freight special right now for you guys at 129. But Marcus said if you call in and, and uh, use the code name there, we're going to go ahead and do half off the freight. What's the code name, uh, Gary? Uh, we, we, I think you want it set up, or we had talked about doing it as framers only. And framers only. You call in, and again, you're going to get Marcus Rye, sure. uh, and we're going to do it as a framers only special. Okay, so now um, you said uh, discounted accessories. What kind of accessories do you need on a machine? Well, there's three accessories that are, are good sellers and well and well used. Uh, you're looking at all center fence. Uh, when you get into a tall center fence, that gives you support on those floaters. It gives you support on the tall shadow box. What does that do? Uh, do you have, a, that have the, Do you have that here, Gary? Can we see it? Yes, sir. It's a standard center fence, but we have a high wall. Oh, so I can flush the frame against that. I see. You hold the frame tight against this, and it just really helps with holding it nice and tight without that frame wanting to tilt plus or minus on. And where does that go? That goes in place of the other one right there yes, with the knot? You, you just remove this uh, mm -hmm. eight millimeter locking lever. This one fits right in place. No changes, no setup. I see. And is that is that aluminum, solid aluminum? Well, it's aluminum walls yeah. on steel plate. Steel plate, okay. Yeah, okay. we like the steel plates. They're heavier uh, and take away any, uh, they're a lot more forgiving when it comes to if that were to be dropped or something. It doesn't hurt it where if aluminum is going to bite it. So, and, and how do you ship these, Gary? Do they, do they come UPS? Uh, no, the machines ship common carrier. Uh, depending on what location you are in the country, we've got partnerships lined up with a number of different carriers. We use four going out of North Carolina, and then they partner with companies all over the place. I see. Uh, and uh, it comes in a crate, right? But it comes in a, in a sturdy wooden box strapped down to a pallet. So if you're in a weird location or don't have a forklift, if you can – Find help for five minutes. These can actually be lifted right off the front. Um, we've got some places that are in business locations that don't allow in uh, 48 foot trucks. So we can ship these in. They'll come in on a straight truck and literally they can just be lifted off if you don't have a forklift or uh, lift truck. How big is the machine in general? How much room do you need and how much does it weigh? Like the one th that's behind you. The one here, if you have a table where I've got some people that put them on work. If you've got a table with a uh, three by three top on it, that leaves you more than enough room. Uh, the reason they like putting it on a cart is if space is a limitation, the cart allows them to bring the machine out, use it when they need it, they can roll it, move around. It, it, you don't have to be perfectly level for this machine to work perfect. Yeah, I, I built I built a, a two by four table for mine, and I have yeah. casters on it. I put little shelves underneath it, and I put all my different keys and accessories right there. Yep, and um, right. 
Yeah. Okay, so a uh, question from Jennifer. She goes, how long is the framers only code good for? Uh, we're doing it for 15 days. 15 days from wherever they watch the video, right? Not from today. Yeah, so and if you, that's right. <laughs> now, what we do is we just set it up. We, we told the posting office there that if they were to call us tonight or something, they'll have it all next week and all the following. Sure. Uh, uh, I, um, I, I asked all the questions that I had here. Um, let's see. Um, Can I bring up one other thing real quick? Yes, please, please. Yeah, the one thing we want to, I know this video, I, I'm disappointed with the sound because of the storm. But I also want to direct people that we've got a whole new picture frame tab on our website for you guys. Uh, because we know there are specific questions that you ask on assembly and things like that. So if you go to our website, we have, I, I'm guessing Marcus and I now have 20 different tabs or instructional videos from assembling a shell back molding to a real ornate molding, how to support it. And those are all on our uh, www.hoffmanusa.com website. And it goes all the way into to literally start to take the machine out of the box, hooking it up to air, adjusting bits. They're all in there. Yeah. All right. This is great. So, um, uh, Gary, I appreciate it. And maybe we'll do this again uh, next month because the sound quality wasn't well. Maybe we'll yeah. figure out a different way to do it. But uh, at least we got something. Here's a question. Let me see. One more question before I go. Tammy says, I want one, but I need to find a place to put it. Any photos of tables to fit them? More info on different models. Okay, she wants to know more information on different models. Uh, and she wants to know the kind of benches that everybody... Uh, now, uh, can you ask her whether she'd be interested in a bench or a rolling cart? And I can email her links to exactly where to get them. Okay, uh, Tammy, um, uh, Gary is in the group. If you reach out to him or post here... What machines are you interested in, and he uh, he will he will be able to reply. Uh, one more question I've got. Tony says, "Please say the discount again." Oh, he Tony wants to know the discount again. Okay, what we're doing is, is five percent on the machines, five percent on accessories or keys, and then we're splitting the one twenty nine freight. So wherever you're at in the country, uh, your your behalf of one twenty nine. Gary, all the discount can they add the five plus five? Does that make a 10? <laughs> hey, we'll have to get with my bill collector markets on that. <laughs> hey, this is great. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, uh, we're, guys, are sorry about the sound. Uh, Steve's got one more question before I go. Hey, Gary, what is the difference between X-Line range and MU range? I don't know what an X-Line. Do you know what it is? Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the X-Line models, uh, we sell a lot of those to... Uh, more hobbyist level or very small shop. Um, the X line, we designed the X line version like like we came out in the M 3s primarily to go after the picture frame industry. The X line versions came out to go after the small shops or hobbyists or on site finished contractors and high end homes or putting casing together and things like that. Um, the motors are a little bit smaller. But again, you can take your X line machine if you have one, and I would do any joint that anybody did on the highest end machine, and you would not see a difference in quality. X lines are great machines. We just found out that you guys have some specific needs, and that's the reason we came out with the MU three line. Yeah, when I buy when I buy machines, I want to buy the best of the machine. This way, yeah, I don't I don't fall short when something comes in. I'm like, man, I should have bought the other one because now I can't use that's it. Right. Yeah. All right, and this is great, Gary. Two inches, and if you got a two and a half inch tall frame, you go, nah, I should have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I spent all this money. I can't use it. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, thank you very much. Say hi to Marcus. And hopefully, we'll do, do this again next uh, next month. We'll get the sound together better and we'll do it again. So, uh, yes, sir. Uh, of course, we will. Thank you for your time. Have a good one, thank Gary. Thank you. Take care.